Hi everyone, welcome to So What? I hope you're having a great day. We are going to be talking about the greatest Christmas gift to give, and that is pajama pants. I don't know about you, but I pretty much give my children new pajama pants every single year. Um, that's mostly because they um, grow out of them every single year and they go to put their Christmas pajamas on and all of a the sudden they are, you know, high waters. And I just realized I didn't have my microphone on. I apologize if you could not hear me very well. Hopefully that is better. All right, here we go. Okay. So pajama pants, that's what we're talking about. I have lots of tips for thread, needles, stabilizers to use to help you when you are creating pajama pants. Um, we're going to be talking about working with knits, also working with woven fabrics like a flannel. Um, flannel makes great pajama pants. Also a really nice uh, cotton sateen or cotton voile would be really, really great for pajama pants as well. It all kind of depends on the style of pants that you're going for. So if you want to create joggers or leggings, those type of pajama pants, then you're going to want to work with a nice knit, okay? If you are going for a style that is more like an elastic waist pant, that is flowy um, or just straight legged, then you can go with a more stable fabric like a woven, like the flannel I was talking about. Now, fleece pajama pants work for either style. So um, also, you know, a knit is also going to work for the elastic waist style as well. So in the description of today's post, I have a few different pajama pant patterns, and those are gonna be the ones that I'm talking about today. Um, those are just patterns that I have liked. I have found very user-friendly, super simple to sew. Um, and with those uh, choices, you can use a serger or a standard sewing machine to construct those, okay? So I'm gonna go over some tips for using either machine. So for you that have sergers out there, uh, you know, break those out when you are making pajama pants because you can whip those puppies out like nobody's business. Now, because I am a crazy person, <laughs> I sewed three pairs of pajama pants over the weekend and I was only in my sewing room for two and a half hours. Now that includes cutting time. And I gotta tell you, cutting the pattern out takes way more time than the actual sewing, okay? So I'll go over some tips for kind of streamlining your sewing as well. So let's say you're sewing pajama pants for eight grandkids. We can get all those done at the same time um, and really streamline the process. So uh, as long as we have everything cut out and ready to go, the sewing is relatively simple, okay? So this is something we can really do now and definitely get them under the tree, wrapped, ready to go in time for the big day. All right, so for those of you not celebrating Christmas, pajamas are great any time of year. We need pajamas all year round. So this content is good for all of us out there. So thank you all for saying hello and good morning. I appreciate that. Thanks for spending some time with me. Um, be sure to comment, like, share the post today because as always, I have another great giveaway. Today, I'll be talking about working with Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. It's a fantastic stabilizer, and it is great for helping us create nice, stable seams when we are working with knits. So I'm gonna go over that with you. And I will be giving away a six yard pack, the eight inch roll of Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi to one lucky person who is commenting, liking and sharing and engaging with the post today. Along with that, I will be giving away a pack of uh, organ needles, jersey needles. Now, jersey needles are what we need when we are sewing with knits because they have a little bit of a ball point to them. That means since a knit fabric is made up of 
interlocking knits, right? Uh, we want our needle to push those fibers aside when we create a stitch rather than piercing through the fabric, which is what a uh, more straight, sharp tipped needle is going to do. If we use that sharp needle when we're working with a knit, it could snag the fabric. Uh, you could have a big old run down the leg of your pants. Um, it could create a hole in the fabric that then unravels over time. So we want that ball point so that it pushes the fibers aside, creating room for that thread and for that stitch to form. All right, so jersey needles and a pack of sticky Fabrisolvi. This is just a sheet, but I'm gonna give away a roll today. The f um, <laughs> I ran out of my sticky Fabrisolvi. So um, I have one precious sheet left. You can get this in uh, eight and a half by 11 sheets, which means you can print on it and use it for quilting designs or free motion work, things like that. You can also get it on the roll. You can also get it on a bolt. So grab that up today. Another thing I wanna talk about before we get started in pajama land is, hold please, that we have a great sale going on. It is our Merry Christmas sale. We are all the way to the letter C. Every day we're giving away something that starts with the letters from Merry Christmas. Excuse me, not giving away. That is the theme of our sale, rather. Um, I'm on the giveaway train here, apparently. So today is C for collections. 40% off our dream collections of slim lines, which are containers that hold lots and lots of thread spools, and the stabilizer dream package. So this is your chance to really stock up or to get a whole line of thread um, if you are super into, let's say, the 30 weight cottons for quilting, grab up a Dream Slimline at 40% off. This is my precious 30 weight cotton Dream package. You could see all the great thread spools that you get in here. So go ahead, grab those up. I mean, 40% off, you really can't beat that. I honestly don't think I've ever even seen that kind of a sale before. So great, great deals to be had. All right. Ooh, Deborah says, hey Deb. Oh, it's Deb. I went to Germany with Deb, you guys, last year. We just had basically our year anniversary from our craft tours trip. So sad that we can't take it this year again, but be on the lookout because as soon as we are able to travel, we will be going back. Deb says, I received my mystery box. It contains some Jersey needles along with some other great swag. I'm excited to try them. Awesome. Um, so now you have something to create with those Jersey needles. Make yourself some leggings, girlfriend. All right, we're gonna go over it right now. Okay, so some tips when you're cutting out your pattern pieces. Now, the first images I'm going to go over are, um, using flannel fabric. So a uh, little bit more stable than a woven. Flannel is great for pajamas. Ooh, before I go on, I just wanted to mention, for those of you who missed last week, we are doing a New Year's Eve sew along with Sally Tomato, New Year's Eve. So if you are looking for something to do, you don't wanna sit around and watch those crazy, uh, you know, New Year's Rockin' Eve shows and that type of thing. Since we cannot be together in person with our loved ones and things like that, let's gather in our sewing rooms for a four hour sew along streaming event. It sounds like a really long time, right? But we will be sewing together starting at eight o'clock Eastern time up until midnight when we can cheers and toast together to a brand new start of a new year. I'm so excited to start a new year, new possibilities, new promises of hope for our future. So please, please, please sign up for our New Year's Eve event. Uh, we will be putting the link in the comments here because I forgot to add it to the description of the post, but it is at sewingonline.sulky.com, which is our brand new education platform. It's so fun and exciting. 
I didn't want to uh, forget to talk about that. And I will be going into more detail about that project, things you need to prepare for the big night uh, all next week. So just wanted to give you a heads up. Be sure to register for your spot. All right, back to pajama land and the flannel pants. So first tip I want to mention when you are cutting out your pattern pieces. Now, pajamas are some of the easiest beginner starter projects, okay? So even if you're making these as a gift, invite the kids over, the cousins, well, have a Zoom call, okay, with them and kind of show them how these come together and it might just inspire them to want to start sewing, okay? So I put together pajamas with my son as one of the first projects that we did together when he was six years old. I made a pair of Harry Potter themed pajama pants for him. He helped cut them out. Whoa! He helped do some of the straight stitch sewing. He learned a lot about sewing and how stitches are formed, that type of thing. And if you grab a fabric that showcases their interests, they get way more into it, okay? So a really, really cool thing to do is have them pick out the fabric they want. Show them some swatches, send them some, some links, you know, to some fabric that's online. Lots of the fabric that I'll be showing today is from So So English Fabrics. Not this, but some of the other fabrics that I'll be showing. So So English Fabrics. They have a great selection of really, really buttery knits and awesome fabrics to use for pajamas. So that's another good resource. You can send your relatives that link, tell them to pick the fabric that speaks to them and that you're gonna make them something really fun for the holidays. You don't have to tell them what it is and then they get to pick it. They feel more involved. They really, really love it. All right, so if you have chosen a directional print like the Harry Potters that I have here. You cannot cut your pattern pieces like this image shows, right? With one leg going one way and the, you know, the front going one way, the back going the other. If you do that, your Harry Potters are going to be flying upside down on the back side or the front side. So keep that in mind. You will need a little bit of extra fabric if you have chosen a directional print. Now the image that I'm showing you here has little hedgehogs that are facing both directions. That is super helpful. We will save some fabric because we can cut our pattern pieces in any which way we choose as long as we are following the grain line on the pattern pieces. All right, so keep that in mind. I also, when I'm working with a flannel or a knit, um, I like to use a rotary cutter to cut out my pattern pieces. It is just way more accurate, especially getting that crotch seam really, really perfect when you're cutting around those curves. Pattern weights come in super handy when you are working with any kind of slippery, stretchy, uh, lofty fabric, okay? It really allows you to have accurate cutting. Now, with a flowier pajama pant pattern, you're gonna have some room to groove, okay? And you might want to just make them one size larger than you know you need, especially if you're working with kids because then they can grow into it. And I know I'll make a pair of pajama pants and a month later, my kids are three inches taller. And here we go again, they need more pajama pants. So re keep that in mind. Also make them longer uh, give yourself a really wide hem that you can take out and make longer. That'll give you a little bit more longevity, you know, get some more life out of the pants. All right. Another tip, when you're working with a knit especially, or even a flannel, I like to use those handy dandy clover wonder clips instead of pins. Now you could certainly use pins, make sure they're very sharp. When you're working with knits, if you have a little burr or something on the pin, you could snag that knit. And now you've cut out your pattern pieces and you've got a snag. So keep that in mind or use those Clover Wonder Clips uh, in lieu of pins when you're sewing. All right. 
<clears throat> Oops, sorry, I've gotten ahead of myself and now I'm, okay, here we go, back on track. Now, whether you're using a serger or a standard sewing machine, it's really, really advisable to finish those seams, whether you are zigzagging them on a standard machine or overlocking them on a serger. Now, this is the waistband seam of just a traditional pair of pajama pants with an elastic waist. These have no pockets, they are straight legged, very, very simple to sew, and you just fold over that top edge, encasing your elastic. But before you do that, go ahead and finish that edge. That way, when you go to insert your elastic through the casing, you aren't, uh, the, that edge isn't raveling inside of the casing, okay? And it just helps with, again, the longevity of your pants through lots and lots of washing and wearing. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so here we are showing that elastic and that nice surged edge. Again, if you don't have a serger, go ahead and zigzag that, or some machines have an actual overlock stitch that you can choose. So make sure that your elastic waistband is a skosh longer or wider than your elastic. Now, I will tell you, I ran out of my inch and a quarter elastic that I used with my uh, New Horizons 11th gear kid pattern. I linked to that in the description of the post so you can go over and take a look. It has a separate waistband piece and then it also has these really nice pockets. All right, so this is a different pattern, but I wanted to say that I ran out of my inch and a quarter elastic when I was making my three pajama pants this weekend. So I had to use an inch and a half. So I needed to adjust my waistband piece to account for my thicker elastic. So keep that in mind. You can always sub something out, but then you may need to make an adjustment to the pattern piece. And an extra quarter of an inch along that waistband isn't really going to affect things too much, but you need to make sure that you have that extra room to groove when you sew your elastic in place. All right, another great tip. Now, this is whether you have a separate elast or a separate waistband or the waistband that is uh, folded over along the top edge of your leg pieces. It's a great idea to go along the seams the side seams, the back seam, and the front crotch seam, and straighten out the fabric there and sew along the elastic through all layers, all right? That ensures that your waistband is evenly gathered along all four of those seams. And it's just an extra little step you can take so that your uh, elastic isn't all bunched up along one area and then you have to smooth it out every single time you wear it. It just keeps it nice and ensures that the elastic doesn't fold inside of that waistband over time. So just another extra step you can take for professional looking pajama pants. Now, really easy to personalize and add a little something special to the pants is by using machine embroidery. So I'm not going to go over the entire machine embroidery tutorial. You can go on over to the blog um, and, uh, you know, it's a very simple process for just adding a patch pocket. You can add a patch pocket. You can add a cuff around the lower edge of the pants. That's another way to keep them going uh, for years to come. If your kid comes to you and says, okay, my pajama pants are four inches too short this year, mom, add a cuff to it. And then you can add a little machine embroidery to that cuff. And now they have pajama pants that are gonna last them another season. Now that's assuming that the waist still fits, but you know, like my kids, they grow taller, 
then they grow outward, then they grow taller, <laughs> then they grow outward. So you might be able to get some more life out of it. And like I said, add a little bit of personalization. These are cute little robot designs. You can add, like I said, a simple patch pocket to the back pattern piece along one of the legs um, and personalize it there. So just another little option, oops, of making them a little bit special. So here's the little patch pocket. Now, take a square of fabric, okay? You'll need your outer square that you're going to embellish and then a lining piece. You will basically do what you would do if you were making a square pillow. After embroidery, add your lining piece, turn it right side out, and then just top stitch it to the rear end of one of those pattern pieces. Whoops, I keep going backwards. And you'll want to kind of top stitch it at a tiny bit of an angle. Now, this isn't super duper technical, um, but a little bit of an angle ensures that when you're wearing it and your bottom pokes out, it actually straightens out a little bit. So you can see that this is placed at a little bit of an angle along that back pattern piece. And then we have our finished little pajama pants, so cute. So if you get a traditional, just straight-legged elastic waist pattern, super simple, here is a way to just make it a little bit special. Now, for construction, I use the Sulky Poly Deco if I'm working on the serger um, for a really slinky looking knit and that gives me really pretty looking seams. You can also use the Sulky 50 weight cotton and steel thread, which these make great little gift packs for your sewing friends, by the way. You get six spools. I'm out of one, as you can see. <laughs> but this is the 50 weight cotton that I use, kind of like an all-purpose thread. I like it for quilting, uh, piecing. I like it for garment construction, especially with a fabric that's a little bit lighter weight. Um, so you can use those in your serger as well or your regular sewing machine. All right. So this is... These are the materials I gathered for my cute little Harry Potter pajamas. Now, this pattern, um, it appears to be out of print. Like I said, this is from a couple few years ago. Um, I did find an online source that still carries this pattern, but it is a very simple, basic pajama pant pattern with that elastic waist. No pockets, no frills, just straight legs. So you can find something similar to that for an adult or for a child. And a lot of times pajama, pa pajama patterns come with both adult and child sizes in them, especially at this time of year when people are making, you know, matching pajamas for the whole family. So you can look for those two and you can get multiple sizes in one pattern. And that's really nice. So for this, I have those Jersey needles. I have the knit elastic. I have the knit fabric and that poly deco thread is what I used for the Harry Potters. And here is my son. Here is Dylan wearing his Harry Potter pajamas. He is so excited. Um, so I also made a cute little top uh, to match and you can see that's part of that pattern piece as or that pattern as well. So anytime you can get multiple pieces or multiple patterns in one, go for it. Why not? All right. I do see a lot of um, comments coming in. So let's address a few before I move forward. Um, okay, just making sure. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, just wanted to uh, make a note of where I ended up so that um, <laughs> I can try to stay organized here because I have a lot of pajamas to go through. Okay, so um, Deborah is asking, do you wash your flannel before cutting? Yes, anytime I'm making a garment, I wash the fabric first because you really never know what's going to happen. Even if you buy a fabric that says it's not gonna shrink, this or that, I always, always, always wash it before cutting it. Um, I don't want to have any puckering or weird shifting of fabric, especially if I'm cutting one fabric 
or one piece one way and the other the opposite way. I, I just always err on the side of caution and wash the fabric first, remove any you know, factory scent or, you know, bizarre sizing or something um, behind in the washing machine. I iron everything and then I cut it out. So like I said at the top of the show, a lot of the times the prep takes longer than the sewing, right? You got to wash and dry the fabric. You got to iron the fabric. Then you got to cut everything out. By the time you're done with that, it's like, phew. So it's a great, great idea to do all of that, you know, all of those first steps, then move on to the first steps of sewing. If you're doing eight pairs of pajama pants, do all the outer leg seams, do all the inner leg seams, do all the crotch seams, and make sure you get every single thing done for each of those eight pairs. And that way you don't get super tired of it or overwhelmed by the time you get to the last one and then that one family member ends up not getting the pair of pajama pants. I know that happens to me a lot. One of my three children will have to wait six months before they get their XYZ, whatever it is, because I just kind of get burnt out. And that's only three pairs of something. So to uh, manage you know, those tasks and make sure you get everything done, do one part of everything, and then you know what? Step away from it for a while then come back, do all the inseams, step away from it for a while. That way you're sure to get everything done and you're kind of focusing on one task. So the margin for error becomes less and less as you work your way through the project. All right. Okay, so I also wanted to mention that um, I have a really great, speaking of Dylan, <laughs> I have a, some great videos I did with Dylan earlier this year because I was working with SoSo -So English and the New Horizons 11th Gear Pattern folks um, to uh, do a pajama pants series with them. I did a sew along with them. So Dylan and I put together a couple of videos and I'm going to show you guys those um, kind of in a little bit because there are a lot of great tips, um, a lot of great tips for teaching kids to sew and a lot of great tips for working with all these things I talked about, the Jersey needles, the sticky Fabrisolvi, working with knits, working with a serger, working with a standard sewing machine. So rather than recreate the wheel here, I'm gonna play those videos in just a moment. But speaking of the sticky Fabrisolvi, you might be saying, well, where do we use that in the pajamas and how does it help us? So. Um, and I said I was going to write a note for where I was, and look, it worked. Ha! <laughs> Huzzah! All right, so when you get to the hemming portion of your pants, and this is a pair of leggings that I worked on, an adult pair that was a free pattern from Emily Thompson of Life So Savory. I linked to it in the description of today's post, so you can head on over. And I do want to mention that the patterns I'm talking about today, other than that one I just showed with the Harry Potter, are digital patterns. So you get a little bit of instant gratification. You can print them, print the pattern pieces off and tape them together, right? Now, what I like about digital patterns is I can cut them for every size I need for my children very easily. I like to use a bolt of Sulky Tear Easy a lot of the times when I'm uh, conserving a pattern or pattern size. The other thing you can do is cut out the size you need for your largest family member and then cut down the pattern from there to create all the other sizes that you need. So digital patterns, um, here's the 11th hour gear joggers that I'm going to show you a little bit later, but you can see how I've taped together all the pattern sheets. Now I will show this in the video with Dylan as well. He learned a lot about patterns, how they work, how the sizing works, and you know what? He loves using tape. So he was a great help actually taping all these together, matching up all the lines. Um, and like I said, pajamas, especially a knit, um, something that has stretchability, you have a little bit of wiggle room. So if, you, if your kid doesn't tape it together perfectly, or if you don't, 
and you know it's off a tiny little bit, it's not gonna matter so much with pajamas as maybe it would with a woven top that has less stretchability. Okay, so back to the sticky Fabrisolvi. Here's where I like to use it. When you are hemming knits, doing a sleeve or doing the lower edge of your pants, a lot of the times you get that wavy looking edge. That is because you're stretching the seam, even if it's ever so slightly, while you're sewing it. Um, if you have a cover stitch and you're using a serger, this isn't going to apply to you much because that serger is really feeding all those layers together quite nicely and creating your cover stitched hem. But for people who only have a standard sewing machine and aren't going to hem it that way, the knit can get pushed by your feed dogs or presser foot, slightly uh, stretching it. You could be inadvertently stretching it while you are creating that hem and all of a sudden you have a wavy lettuce edge hem. Now that is also a look, that is also a thing. So you could just go with it and say, that's what I meant all along. Or we can use stabilizer and we can fix the problem before it ever even begins. So I will take my sticky Fabrisolvi, cut strips of it and place it along the hem of the pants, just like that. And that stabilizes it and makes it so that you can sew your hem perfectly. Then you throw it in the washing machine and all that sticky Fabrisolvi washes away. No one will ever know and you have a perfectly hemmed knit garment. It is absolutely fantastic. Best thing you can do and I will show you exactly how I did that in the videos I was talking about. So. Here I have a little bit of a stretch stitch for that lower edge because this is a leggings pattern. So that lower edge needs to stretch so that you can get it over your feet and then it cinches to your ankles. So do not do a straight stitch when you are hemming a leggings pattern. You need that stretch stitch so that it has a little bit of give to it um, and then you, know, you can wear it like leggings. Now, if you're doing a straight leg pant, you can use a straight stitch for your hem because those legs are so wide, you're, you know, it doesn't need to stretch to get your foot in there. All right, and there we have it. The um, sticky Fabrisolvi is washed away. And since knits don't ravel, you don't need to do a double turned hem if you don't want to. You can leave that raw. All right. All right, Marilyn is asking, I've had problems with my needles when using sticky stabilizer. Will this sticky stabilizer be a problem on the needles? So I have never had that problem. And I honestly don't know why that is. But I also, I change my needles very frequently. Um, I, you know, it's recommended to change your needles after every six hours of sewing. For me, that could be changing a needle <laughs> three times a day. Um, I go through needles like crazy. Um, the other thing you can try is a little bit of sewer's aid. This is available at sulky.com. It is a water-based lubricant that you can put a little tiny bit, literally a drop on your fingers and slide your fingers down over the needle. It is again water-based so it's not going to harm your fabric it will wash away completely and this will help your needle pierce through that sticky stabilizer without having any sticky problems now you might need to uh, apply this maybe two times during the construction of the pants um, you know maybe do it once for one hem and then again for the next but you really don't need a lot of this stuff. It lasts a long, long time, all right? So this is also good for things like working with metallic thread. Um, it really helps reduce that friction that happens with high-speed machine embroidery. So just add this to your cart, very inexpensive. And like I said, it's gonna last you a really long time. All right. 
Yvonne says, I use a titanium needle when using sticky stabilizer because it doesn't heat up the same way other needles do. Less mess. That's a great tip. Thank you so much. Um, yes, very, very good idea there. All right, so I want to get to the first video that I did with Dylan. Um, and now I just, I have to say, <laughs> This was right around when the sheltering in place all started um, last, you know, in March, that type of thing. So um, he's a little disheveled, let's just say, but super cute. And he was into it. And <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. We made, whoopsies, not these. We made these pants. And again, this is fabric from So So English. Check them out if you haven't already great quality i mean these uh these knits that they have are just so buttery and soft this is my daughter riley's version that she helped create and uh you know again with that nice front pocket and the uh ribbed waistband these are just so nice and uh you'll love working with these fabrics um and in the videos, you will hear all the products I used. I hear some of you asking about the serger and threads and things like that. It's all explained in this video. I'm going to start with the very first video was day one of the sew along. It's about seven minutes long or so. Um, and again, it describes all of the materials and that type of thing. So here we go. Let's start uh, the so So English Pajama Pants Sew Along Day One. Hi there, I'm Ellen March, Director of Content for Sulky of America, and this is Dylan. Hi. Dylan is eight years old, and we are super excited to be doing the So So English Sew Along with you today. I'm gonna go over on day one some of the materials that we're gonna be using for uh, these pajama pants. And first off, the pattern that we're using has a couple of different options as far as style goes, right? Yeah. So there's a straight leg pant version, there's a jogger version, and you can also make shorts, but we're gonna go with the straight leg version, right, Dylan? And we did make a couple of modifications to the pattern just to make it super simple, something that an eight-year-old can help you tackle. Um, I also have twins that are five, and they also wanna make pants, but in the interest of kind of making this tutorial a little bit easier in my confined space, Dylan's gonna help me out and I'll post pictures of my daughters making their pants as the sew along goes along. So Dylan and I, again, decided on the straight leg pant and to modify it, we are not gonna do the drawstring, we're just gonna do a traditional elastic waistband. And instead of doing the faux fly front, we're just gonna do a straight front on the pant but Dylan wanted the, the pockets, right Dylan? So we are gonna leave the pockets in. To start off, the So So English fabric that we're using is a double brushed poly. This is the fabric that Dylan picked out for his pants. So they're very, very soft and uh, So So English has some great kid-friendly prints. <laughs> Dylan really likes this one. Another suitable fabric, my Riley picked out this fabric. And this is a French terry fabric. It's just as soft as a traditional kind of lightweight knit would be, except it's got some little kind of almost sweater knit properties on the uh, wrong side of the fabric. So those are two great types of fabric for this particular pattern. We also have some ribbing, and this is what we're gonna use for the waistband. You can see it's super stretchy, right? It's gonna stretch right along with our elastic. <laughs> okay, so something that you are definitely going to need is a jersey or a ballpoint needle. Now, a ballpoint needle is kind of rounded at the tip instead of being super sharp. 
So Dylan, you know how a ballpoint pen is kind of rounded? Yeah, and that one is round and it makes and it stretches it and then it puts the pin through. Right. So instead of piercing the fabric like a traditional universal needle might, it's actually going to push the fibers aside to create the stitch. So you won't have snags or holes in your more delicate knit fabric. So Jersey needle, you're gonna need that. And then Dylan is going to be at a traditional sewing machine, this brother machine, and he is going to use sulky 50 weight cotton and steel thread for the top stitching of the pants. And I'm gonna be working on a serger and I am going to use some sulky poly deco thread. Now poly deco is a 40 weight thread, comes in a lot of different nice shiny colors, and Dylan actually picked four colors to use in the serger. Now that kind of serves two purposes. One, Dylan got to pick out all of the great thread colors, right Dylan? <laughs> he loves that. Two, he gets to see what color um, thread is used for what part of the stitch. Now I'm gonna set my serger for a four thread overlock stitch, and he will be able to see which color of thread uh, creates which part of that stitch. So it's just another learning opportunity when you're sewing with your kids. Now, if you don't have a serger, you can definitely just use a regular sewing machine and you will set it for a stretch stitch. It's a little bit of a sideways or up and down type of zigzag stitch. And all of those suggested stitches are in the pattern itself. All right, another great product that I'm gonna introduce into this is Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. <laughs> Sticky Fabrisolvi is a water-soluble stabilizer and it's going to help when we hem the pants. And we'll get to that a little bit more tomorrow when we're doing the bulk of our sewing. So today we are going to lay out the pattern. Well, first we're gonna to tape together the pattern. Yeah. We're going to then cut it out. Of course. Then we're going to lay it onto our fabric and cut out our fabric pieces so that we're ready to sew tomorrow. Yeah. You wanna make sure that your fabric has enough stretch as indicated by the pattern. Take a four inch strip of the fabric so that the greatest amount of stretch runs along the length. Stretch it along the graphic on the pattern to see if it has enough stretch. It needs to have at least 25% stretch for this pattern. To decipher which size pattern to make, take a few simple measurements. Write down the waist, hip, and pant length measurement. Then it's time to prepare the pattern. Consult the pattern instructions to learn how to tape together the pattern pieces. Then cut out each piece according to the size that best matches your measurements. PJs have a forgiving fit, so you can go off of the finished hip measurement to decipher the size that's right for you. Make sure to wash and dry your fabric before cutting out the pattern pieces. Fold the fabric with right sides together so that you can cut mirror images of each piece, which will create a right and a left leg, and do the same thing for the pocket pieces. Place the pattern pieces along the grain line or length of the fabric so the greatest amount of stretch is along the width. Pin or use fabric weights to secure the pattern pieces to the fabric. Pattern weights won't mar the stretch fabric. I like to use a rotary cutter to cut out knit fabrics. It's just much easier and more accurate than the scissors. When you're dealing with stretch fabrics, they like to kind of stretch out of shape when you're using scissors. Um, and so rotary cutters are just a little bit easier to manage. I don't let my children use a rotary cutter yet, 
For eight years old and under, I'd recommend either having them put their hands on top of yours while you're cutting so that their fingers stay way away from that rotary blade, or they can just watch this step. There are also special gloves that you can buy for adults or children that will protect your hands from cuts if you wanna go that route. Now that we've got our front pants cut, our back pants cut, and both of our pocket pieces, we also have our waistband cut, it is time to move on to the sewing. Oh, that was so fun. <laughs> I'm so glad that I have these, you know, gems. Uh, my son looks so different now, and that was just March. So, um, yes, he's a total ham. Um, but uh, I don't know where he gets that from. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that is how you get everything prepped, you know, for the pajama pants. And honestly, I couldn't... Uh, explain that any better than how it already was recorded. So this next video will take you through the construction steps. Um, there's a little bit of me at the serger and things like that. So I will go ahead and start playing it. Again, keep your questions coming in because I'm viewing them uh, while the video is playing. And just to recap, uh, for those of you commenting, liking, sharing, engaging with the post today, our giveaway is a six yard roll of Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. And you will see that being used in a moment. And I'm also going to give away a pack of the great, great uh, organ needles, the jersey, because that's what we need when we're working with this great fabric. So lots of you were asking, where do I get this fabric? Again, that is from So So English. Um, I believe uh, the great Sulky team who helps me out here is uh, putting that link in the post here or in the comments, but so, so English. They have great, great knits and really cute patterns. Um, so here we go. I will start this other video again. Keep your comments coming. I love hearing from you and we'll go through a little bit of Q&A when uh, these are, when this video ends. All right. It's day two of our pajama pants sew along with So So English Fabrics. I'm Ellen March, the director of content for Sulky of America, and this is Dylan. Hi. Dylan's eight years old, and he has been helping me um, cut out the pattern as well as cut out the fabric, right? Exactly. So today we're going to get to the sewing, the most fun part, right? Yeah. Dylan loves to sew. So Dylan is going to be sewing on this Brother Machine, which it actually also has embroidery capabilities. You can see it has a Star Wars theme to it. There's actually removable face plates for it that are Star Wars themed. So that's another Amazing. great way <laughs> to get your kid into sewing is get a machine that really speaks to their interests because they're out there. Amazing. And I am going to be using a Baby Lock Triumph serger. So we're gonna set up our machines with the thread that we talked about yesterday. I'll be using Sulky Poly Deco thread in the serger and he is gonna be using Sulky 50 weight cotton and steel thread in the standard sewing machine. He's gonna be using a jersey needle with a stretch mm -hmm. stitch. And for top stitching, he will just be using a straight stitch that's a little bit longer than normal to accommodate the stretch of the fabric. I'm gonna be using a four thread overlock stitch. And what do you think, should we get sewing? Yeah. Let's do it. We're using sulky 50 weight cotton and steel thread on the sewing machine and we're gonna wind a bobbin swap out our needle to install a size 7010 organ jersey needle. This has a ball point so it doesn't pierce the fabric and snag it. We're going to thread the serger with sulky 40 weight poly deco thread for the construction seams and I'll set it for a four thread overlock which will stretch with the fabric so the seams don't pop. Dylan chose four different colors just for fun and then 
he could see which needle or looper creates which part of the serger stitch. So then he'll learn how the machine works. You can also set your sewing machine for a stretch stitch if you don't have a serger. This looks like a diagonal zigzag stitch. Or you can choose a standard zigzag stitch and lower the width to one millimeter. The first step is to attach the pocket pieces to the pant legs, and I'm going to do that at the serger. One is wrong side out and one is right side out. And we are going to take the one that's right side out and match the inseams with the one that's wrong side out. So I actually put this on my arm like a sleeve and this is really great to get the kids involved but it's a little hard to show on camera. I've got the seam, the inseam, facing my hand, and I'm gonna hold on to it. Then I find the inseam of the other pair of pants, and I'm gonna slide my arm inside the pant so that my inseams are right sides together. You see that? My inseams are right sides together. Then I slide my arm out and here are my two crotch seams of the legs. And I'm going to make my seam allowances go opposite directions 
That's called nesting the seams. And I'm gonna put a pin in there. Then you wanna go ahead and pin along your crotch seam so that you can sew it without it stretching. Just gonna put a few pins in. And it, your fabric is gonna wanna curl a little bit because of the stretchiness of the knit. So just keep making sure you're putting your presser foot up and down when you're sewing and going slow and continuing to straighten it out as you sew. Just a couple more pins here. Now I'm gonna serge this seam. I'm gonna go from the center back seam to the center front seam. If I was sewing this on a standard sewing machine, I would go from the crotch seam up to the center back seam and then the crotch seam up to the center front seam. Here we go. So Dylan and I have the pants almost done. We need to attach the waistband. So to make things easier, Dylan and I sewed together the front waistband piece and the back waistband piece. Those are the seams you can see there on the side. And then we inserted our elastic already. So the elastic is inside there. To make it easier to attach to the top of the pants, I went ahead and surged that whole edge. So everything in here is contained. So now Dylan, what we need to do is we're gonna kind of match up those side seams of our waistband with the side seams of the pants. So we need to get this in here so that right sides are facing and we're gonna pin, but it's not gonna fit the whole way around because it needs to be stretchy. So we're gonna only pin the center front, center back and side seams. So I'll do this side seam. You see how there's a seam right there and a seam right here? We're gonna match those up and I'm gonna put a pin. And don't pin through the fat part, which is where the seam is, pin to the other side of it. Okay. So can you do that side? and back through. Perfect. So now we've got our side seams pinned and I have kind of a fold line along the center front. It's hard to see on the camera, but we can see it. And we're gonna match our center front seam with that fold line and put another pin. And then same thing, I have a little fold line here. We're gonna match that with the center back seam and we're going to place a pin along that seam. So now when we take it over to the sewing machine or the serger, we can stretch our waistband to fit between each pin as we sew. And I know I said earlier we don't want to stretch as we sew, but we do want to stretch the waistband as we sew and that's going to cinch it up to our waist. I went ahead and surged the waistband and we stretched it as we were sewing it so that it would fit the outer edge of the pant. And now we're going to turn it right side out and Dylan is going to do some more of his top stitching just to secure this seam allowance and make sure that it's going to lie flat. 
So we're going to do a line of top stitching, Dylan, along the blue flat fabric. Do you see that? Okay. So let's turn it right side out. And we are already set up for our top stitching. Okay, let's start at our center back seam right here. And put this under the presser foot so that your needle is going to go in right next to the white, but not touching the white. Can you see that? All right, so let's put the presser foot down. Can you put your hands on top of mine while we sew? All right, and slowly. Perfect. Are we sewing straight? Yeah? Okay, stop for a sec. So another good thing to think about to control the speed that your child is sewing is if you have a machine with speed control, you can put it all the way down going as slow as you want or as fast as you want so that no matter how far they press on the presser foot, it'll still go rather slowly and they won't be sewing too quickly. Wanna put your hands up here again? Okay, go ahead. All right, we're gonna finish up the waistband and then it's time for the hem. Now we've got our waistband sewn and we have our nice little top stitch seam. And you know what? If that seam isn't straight and it isn't perfect, it's no big deal because it is a stretchy elastic seam and no one's gonna know. All right, so after your waistband is complete, it's time to do the hem. And I highly suggest that you have your child wear the pants and mark the hem just to make sure you're not gonna make them too short. All right, so I've got the hem pinned in place. It's a double fold hem. And I'm gonna show you what I was talking about with the Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. Now, this is a very stretchy seam. It's gonna be hard for kids to sew, really people of any age to sew. Um, straight without puckering and without that lettuce wave that you can get. Which, you know, if you're making a pair of pants and you want that lettuce edge, go ahead and stretch it while you sew it and you'll have this wavy sort of edge. All right, so I've cut a strip of the sticky Fabrisolvi and I'm going to peel away the paper backing just like any kind of sticker. And you can see this is the tacky side and this is the not tacky side. And again, this is gonna wash away completely after we've made the pants. So along your fold, you'll just place the sticky Fabrisolvi just like a sticker along your hem. And this is gonna secure it while you're sewing. So just cut enough strips to go around the entire pant leg or the entire hem of the pant leg, rather. And then you'll just go ahead and sew your hem in place. So Dylan was able to sew this completely without pins. And you can see he just sewed through all those layers. And then the first time that the pants get washed, the Fabrisolvi is just going to dissolve completely away. So that's a great, great tip for sewing knits, especially hemming knits, which can be challenging. All right, so we're gonna go see what these look like and Dylan's gonna get a chance to try them on. Oh, Dylan, what a ham. Okay, love it. 
So lots of great questions came in during that video, so I'm gonna address some of those now. Um, Esther is asking, did you use a ribbed knit fabric for the waistband? What's the advantage for adding a waistband instead of turning down the top edge to make a casing? Well, the simple answer is that that particular pattern had a separate waistband piece. So that's why it was added. Also, since you have those front pockets um, th that are at you know a little bit of an angle, you need that separate waistband piece so that your upper edge seam um, uh, kind of cuts that pocket off at the top. So if you had a longer waistband piece, you would have that little bit of, um, of pocket kind of opening along the waistband. Hopefully that makes sense. So this is what I mean. So here is that pocket that's added, okay? So if this was just one pattern piece, um, you would have a little open area along your waistband right there if you didn't have a separate waistband piece. So I think that's the majority of the reason why that was a separate piece. And yes, this is um, a rib knit. So it is, while this fabric is super slinky, this is a heavier uh, weight knit. And um, you can get creative and add a different color. Now I just grabbed this sort of off-white color and I used it for all of my kids' pajama pants. So um, made sure that it coordinated and then, you know, I was able to just buy one piece of yardage of that same color. So here is the next one on deck is going to be this cute, cute rainbow fabric. And then again, that same color of ribbing. So it kind of goes with all those pairs of pants. So a lot of you asking about, so why did I use pins if I told you in the beginning to use the great clover wonder clips uh, to secure your pattern pieces? And here is the answer. Again, very sharp pins so that you don't snag the fabric. So the fabric that I use for Dylan's pants and these rainbow ones is a very, very, like I said, buttery, lightweight knit. Now, my kids are like me. They run hot when they sleep. They don't want fleece pajamas. They don't want real heavyweight. And so I went with this really, um, you know, nice, lightweight, uh, stretchy, I think it's like a lycra knit, okay? So if I were to use the Clover Wonder Clips while I was surging, they would have simply slipped off while I was doing the high speed sewing of the surging, um, simply because they cannot hold this lighter weight, these lighter weight fabric layers together. So in that case, I used pins. But if you're working with a flannel or a heavier weight knit, I suggest using those Clover Wonder Clips instead. Now, this is a different like interlock knit and it is a little bit heavier weight. So the Clover Wonder Clips can hold on to these layers while you're sewing. So you really need, just need to pay attention to your fabric content um, when you are you know, deciding on the PJs that you want to make. All right, uh, someone asked, I have to find it, if I used a quarter inch seam uh, for the serger. Now, this pattern calls for a three eighths seam. So that is what I used. And I actually gave myself a little bit wider of a seam um, because you could, you notice when I was surging, I didn't cut off very much fabric, it, if any at all. And that simply was because I was giving myself a little room to groove so that when my son got older, he would still fit into the pants. And again, pajamas, very forgiving. They can be super baggy. They can be a little bit tight. So uh, I was just giving myself a little extra room by, uh, you know, using that little bit more narrow seam allowance and not cutting off more fabric. Okay. Um, there was another question I wanted to address, and I'm sorry, there's a lot that came in. That's awesome. Keep them coming because again, 
that makes you eligible to receive our prize today, which is a six yard roll of the sticky Fabrisolvi that is your savior when it comes to doing hems on knit fabric or anything stretchy, really. Um, also your pack of Jersey organ needles. All right. Um, I might have lost the other one I wanted to address here. Um, so I apologize. Oh, here we go. Kathy said, how did you know what size to make? So in that first video, I showed um, taking Dylan's measurements. You need waist, hips, and length. And again, I highly suggest make them longer than you think you need when you are making pants for kids. If you're making them for yourself, go ahead and hem them because let's face it, we're not getting any taller. <laughs> so again, you know, if you want to get some longevity out of the pants, make a wider hem, you can do a double fold hem, and then you can let it out a little bit as the child grows. Now, it's a little bit harder to remove seams on knit fabric, especially if you're using that stretch stitch. So just be really careful, remove things from the wrong side, um, and then pull out that thread and um, elongate your hem. You can also just cut that hem off and stitch on a cuff. And again, that's a great place for a little bit of machine embroidery embellishment. So you have options of making these last longer, especially when working with kids um, and adding your own little twist, a little bit of personalization to it. So, all right. Um, Tina says, can you use this to make sweats? Um, I assume you're talking about that type of fabric. Um, and also this 11th hour gear, like I showed you in that first video, it comes with different options. Look at all these different options. There are shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, shorts, pants, and then there's joggers, all right? And that's actually what my daughter chose for the cute little rainbow fabric that I just showed you. She wants to make the joggers. So that's pretty close to like traditional sweatpants. There's a cuff at the bottom um, that, you know, cinches around your ankle. And then of course that waistband, same kind of pocket deal. Um, but those are more of like sweatpants. And yes, I'm going to use that lighter weight knit for them uh, because again, my kids just, you know, they get too hot. So um, yeah, you can do that. Barb is asking, missed the first part. Where did the pattern come from? The pattern is a digital pattern from New Horizons Designs. It's called the 11th Hour Gear Pajama Pants. And if you expand the description of today's post, hit the little see more button, you'll find all the links for those patterns. There's a great blog post on sewing knits and sewing pajamas for the whole family. And then there is an adult pattern, which is a leggings pattern. And you'll learn all about measuring yourself and kind of drafting your own uh, pattern or drafting that one to fit your body. So that's a great post from Emily Thompson of Life So Savory. So I hope you enjoyed So What today. Thank you for spending a little bit of your afternoon with Sulky. We appreciate you. And again, join me for the New Year's Eve bash happening on, you guessed it, New Year's Eve. We're starting at 8 p.m. Eastern time. You can watch in your time zone or you can wait until the event is over and watch it anytime at your leisure just by registering for the event. We've got $36.99 worth of freebies for all registrants. You will get the brand new Zelda pattern by Sally Tomato for free for registering for the event. That's a $9.99 value. And then you get two embroidery collections. One is a hand embroidery collection. The other is for machine embroidery. So all skill levels are welcome. All capabilities of your machine are welcome. And we're gonna have a great time on New Year's Eve. So be sure to register for that. We will talk more in depth about that next week. I'll go through the pattern a little bit more, the fabrics we will be working with, a little bit of prep so you can be ready on the big day to sew along with us. We will be sewing in real time over the course of four hours leading up to the big toast at midnight. So I hope you can all join us there. And uh, I will see you next week for another So What as we get closer and closer to Christmas and all of the other great holidays 
we are all celebrating at this time of year. So have a wonderful day and I will see you next week.